morning. Welcome to Hemp Engineering. Um, it is a great pleasure having you among us uh, with your vision, your working knowledge, what you're dreaming. Um, and this is an audience that I'm pretty sure will enjoy listening to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. And going straight to the point, <laughs> like I told you earlier, um, what bring you to, to the hemp business? What, what, what was your lead? Yeah, so um, one day I was boarding on a professional social network, uh, looking for news, answering uh, messages uh, and stuff like that. And I found like a post from, from you, Raman, uh, talking about hemp uh, industry in, in WA. So I was uh, curious, I read that post. And then I, I ask you to connect with me and, and start this, yeah, discussing the, the matter. And you agreed for, for the connection and we have been starting that discussion. And then that's where uh, after those different uh, months, I've been more involved and, and really keen to, to proceed uh, into the, the project. Um, uh, Benjamin, this is a surprise for me. <laughs> and, and I'm very pleased that somehow I have influenced a character just such as yourself and, and influenced you to come on board one way or another. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Yes. I, this brings us to the second question, Benjamin, is on regards to your thinking on regards to the prohibition era. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, prohibition, um, I'm not really familiar with the legislation regulation uh, in place uh, regarding the AMP uh, cultivation. Uh, what I do uh, understand from my basic knowledge in that field is that there is a distinction between industrial hemp, which is uh, low THC content and um, high level of THC content, which we can call cannabis used for pharmaceutical therapy and, and and drugs uh, use. So that distinction is really good um, because you, you don't mix the, the whole um, project into that. Uh, but as far as I know, uh, all the different countries set up their own uh, regulation regarding the low content of THC. And that, uh, you not uniformity of legislation can be a, a, a bit um, difficult for the different organization in order to um, provide and grow uh, industrial hemp and 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 deliver uh, what the market can can absorb uh, so i would think that a good uniform international legislation saying what is exactly Industrial hemp will be really helpful. Um, here in Australia, you've got the Australia Industrial Hemp Association, which is working towards that goal uh, in order to um, influence work with government. government and influence, yeah, uh, to pass new new regulation in order to facilitate the industrial hemp uh, market to grow and help the uh, agricultural sector deliver more volume of that uh, industrial hemp. And then finally, uh, yeah, developing more um, uh, product and material out of that. So, I think that's a good uh, space to 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 watch. And um, yeah, in in the near future, I will try to be more involved and and have more understanding about uh, the regulation uh, system in place. Yes, I agree with you that every country has its own regulations and their own cultural understanding of the of the prohibition itself. So uh, every country and region will have to evolve as, as it is. Yes, I yeah. agree with you. Um, Benjamin, um, tell us about your dreams in what you want, what, 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 what you're after. <laughs> what yeah. are you working on right now? Yeah, so uh, let's get back into my, my, my feedback. Uh, I, I come from a material science and technology. I've been working in composite material for different uh, application. One was um, the French Fencing Federation, um, replacing metal blades into 
fiber composite material for safety reason, uh, using it that into educational program and and uh, for kids. Um, so I've been yeah, working on that, and then I switch into polymer science and technology in a master degree. Um, I've been working then uh, in that area for automotive industry and wire and cable uh, market, engineering the polymer in order to achieve specific market application. I then switched six years ago into bioplastic um, engineering uh, and more recently into uh, recycling plastic solution. So basically what I do right now is offering consulting, coaching, training, um, advice. Uh, I wish I can uh, grow up to the point that I can set up a laboratory scale um, workshop where I can work on R&D uh, projects, uh, do more um, testing and analyzing and help the uh, local uh, industry. In, in these regards. Yeah, I'm very sure, Benjamin, that somehow this video will reach in the proper hands because an asset, asset such as yourself with a, a proper farming um, technology and the project management technology, we all can have, we can do miracles for a lot of people. Yes, I am very sure we can, a more important help um, the earth itself, because this will basically substitute the using the fossil yeah. plastic, uh, which is a big problem for all. Yeah. yeah, true. So that brings us to the to our last question: uh, Do you believe that cannabis can help to create a self-sustainable circular economy era? Country? Society. Yeah, I do. I do think that uh, industrial hemp can uh, be part of that uh, sustainability and circular economy uh, area. Um, one definition of sustainability uh, I would always use. Uh, I bore it, but I, I make it mine because I do believe in that definition. That's uh, history, my man. That's history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like a sustainable development uh, is a development that meets the needs uh, of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs. And a sustainability development as, is a relation between economic, social and environmental aspects. Um, and on the other side, when you are talking about circular economy, uh, you need to realize that it means the demand and the production are at an equilibrium point, which means you, you, you're not talking about global mass uh, production and sending everything around the world to supply the demand. You need to really think about cluster uh, demand and production. And that's, that's the tricky part because in, in our, our world with all the different economic reality, it's really hard to um, meet small demand with expensive production capacity or, or equipment, uh, energy, labor, and stuff like that. So it's a, a big challenge. Doesn't mean that it's impossible, but it's something I agree, I agree. everyone has to work on. And so when we are- is possible. But you, yes, definitely. Uh, we will need to write up a new social contract where uh, different lifestyle will take over because having a plan that can grow, can grow yeah. and grow and grow and grow and you use it for multiple purposes. Once the industrial park is set up, it's either to grow or to maintain it. But, yeah. the, but the production will be the same for the local market. Yeah. And that brings us prosperity, even if we don't want to have it, because it is it's something that repeats by itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> for food, for clothing, for housing. Yeah, yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say. Like uh, when you take the sustainability and the circular economy principle, you need to find raw material able to uh, uh, yeah supply the demand. 
but when you have one raw material able to only uh, deliver one application, uh, it's it's really hard to fulfill the circular economy and sustainability okay. principles while using industrial hemp, which can be used in several sectors, uh, construction, healthcare, uh, textile, uh, engineering material, food, and more. It's it's much interesting and 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 much easier to fulfill those principles of circular economy and sustainability. That's what I think. Um, I had a dream once uh, when I learned about plastic hemp that we could end up building our own submarines. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin, do you have something that good that you would like to share with the audience? Just i um, happy to have any feedback uh, from the audience and uh, if you have any questions or, or, or projects or anything that I can be helpful, just just let me know. It will happen. Thank you. Let's, uh, Thank you. let's, let's say ask the Providence that things will come in the proper time and the right place. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin, for your time. And I, I am very grateful that you attended this invitation. Uh, we will do our best from our side to reach uh, this message to people that are willing to, you know, to add value in the change of what we're doing. Okay. Thank you, Raman. Thank you. Thank you once again. Take care. Bye. <laughs>